What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Dead Funny Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Joining today is my co-host, JoJo. <sighs> Not to jump back into a uh, another Final Fantasy uh, tangent <laughs> here, but uh, man, dude, did I get fucked real with a split second. Split second. It wasn't like it was long. It was just a split second. But I was like scrolling through Twitter and literally... Saw the fucking April Fool's post they posted about Final Fantasy 16, where it had like a release date of June this year, and it said coming to both PC and uh, PlayStation Five. And I was oh, just no. all like, "Fuck!" And it was Square Enix's official account too. It wasn't like a joke account. It was Square Enix's official account. And I was just all like, "Holy shit! What?" I was like, "I bought a PlayStation Five for no reason. Like, why?" And shit like that. And so, like, I literally went to go click the comments, and then it just hit me. I was like, "It's fucking April Fools! God damn it, dude!" Like, I feel like that was a dick move on Square Enix's part. I feel like with all the bullshit that's happened with this game's information coming out to us so far, like that was kind of a dick move. I think the exact words. I said where when I saw that whenever I first saw the release date back when I still thought it was potentially real was why is there a release date? We haven't even gotten like a second trailer. Like yeah. that was the first thing that came out of my mouth. Like we haven't even gotten a second trailer yet. What the fuck? Yeah. So that was just a constant thing all day that day. I- I'm so done with April Fool's. I'm just done with it. Mm. It's just done. Oh. And then I saw like all the tweets from like Rooster Teeth. I was like, yeah, I remember back when I used to watch all their fucking content. Because it's like their uh, anniversary is on April Fool's. That's when they started the company as a joke. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know, man. It just sucks, dude. That That company has just, man. It's like Bernie left and then it was like scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal it's almost as if like bernie held the company together it was crazy dude so and now i just like literally don't watch any of their content at all he was like my and it's not so much the scandals i mean the scandals are bad don't don't get me wrong so yeah i wouldn't watch those specific those people in particular like i don't feel it's fair to just or to hold everybody accountable for what the one person did. Like, that's just not fair. You know, like, fucking, like, for instance, one of them was, like, sexting and shit with, like, a fucking underage fan. Like, that's, like, holy fuck. So, you know, uh. can't really hold the rest of them accountable for that. So it's, like, you know, be like, oh, boycott Rooster Teeth content. It's, like, eh. it, For me, it was just, like, I've always been, like, hardcore about Bernie. Yeah, dude, it just, it like, whenever he started doing... His VODs, dude, like, or his blogs. No, not even blogs. It was his VODs. Yeah, just vlogs, vlogs. There we go. That's the fucking word I'm looking for. Replace the B with a V. Vlogs. Uh, I fucking loved them. They were just so inspirational. Like, especially like his one about failure and shit like that. Like, it was just like one of the things that he said, and this was something that like changed my life big time. Was um, he did a uh, he did a vlog on motivation. And he said that he was on a panel with a whole bunch of other content creators and they were talking like one of the questions from the audience for each person was about motivation. And it's like, what motivates you to, you know, continue to make the content? What motivates you to do this? Even in your lows, what's motivating you? And he goes, and it was a nice mix of like YouTubers to Twitch streamers, da, 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 which deal with different variations of like live views versus views, you know, as the video comes out type deal. And um, he's like, I gave a pretty unpopular answer, and that was that I don't believe in motivation. And he said, for me, discipline is a lot more reliable because when it's 5 o'clock in the morning, it's not going to be like me waking up and trying to think of like some heroic fucking story in order to motivate me to get out of bed to do what I need to do. He's like, but I'm a very list oriented person. So for me, it, uh, it was a situation where, um, 
doing lists like uh, he talked about downloading this app named Streaks and I downloaded it. And it's he's like, whenever you miss one, like it's mean to you, it does like an X over it. And it's like, ah, oh, you missed a day, you suck, da, 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 whatever. And it is one of those things where it's like whenever you get up and you see like you're on a streak of like 75 days, that's more motivating to me to get out of bed, to continue to do what I'm doing. And that was, like, life-changing for me because, like, I downloaded the streaks and, like, I, I I knew I was a list-oriented person. I just didn't know how deep that could go. And so then it was, like, that was, like, how I started Dead Funny, like, how I was doing, like, the streaming and shit. Da, 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 da. It's, like, I had that streaks app and I was just, like, logging on it. Like, this got to get recorded. This got to get recorded. This got to get recorded. All right, sweet. Now, this, 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 this. And it would just, you know, you as soon as you were done, you just hold the thing and it makes a little noise. Shoop. And then, boom, it's logged in. If not, and you miss it, you get a big fat X, and you're just like, ugh. And especially whenever you have them, like, together is the worst part. Like, let's say if I had, like, meet with Kelsey once a week, meet with JoJo once a week, meet with JJ once a week, right? And me and you missed a day. Then it would, like, what it does is it's, like, meet with Kelsey, meet with JoJo, meet with JJ, and it's like always in a circle. And then, like, in the middle of that circle, it will have the, the amount of streaks that I'm on. So, like, let's say mine and Kelsey are at 22, me and JJ are at 22, and then me yep. and you miss a day. And now that's an X. Now it's restarted. So now it's, like, 22, 0, 22, and you're just like, ah, like, that that shit right there. Yeah, that, that shit again. me. That, that, my psychology is that means the one time that I've broken the streak – that's it. We're done. Yeah. I'm not building up that streak yet. Come on. I haven't done a wordle since I fucked it up one day, like 50 days in. I'm like. I don't even know what the fuck that is. That completely passed me. I know I know of it because fucking everybody's doing it. I don't know what the fuck it means. I just see all these fucking different colored blocks getting posted every fucking day. I have no idea what it is. Oh yeah, I got I got deep in the wordles, the dordles, the quartles. Uh, they got all of them. It's it's just there's a word and you try to guess what the word is, and you got like six guesses. They tell you which letters are right. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. Uh, and like yeah, I said, something just passed like, me. And it's weird, like that the New York Times bought it because it's like not an original idea; it's a concept that already exists in a, in multiple forms. Right? Yeah, it's. They just took internet by storm, dude. It's crazy how that yeah. shit just happens. It's like ah, yeah, I mean, this is gonna be fucking the shit. Yeah. Like, this isn't an original thing. It's just for whatever reason, this incarnation of it took off. That was crazy that they took that away. It like it just doesn't exist anymore. It's just gone. Uh, you know what I mean? But then somehow I think it came back or something. There's an arcade game at, at the at a bowling alley. Good guy. I saw that's just Flappy Bird. Yeah, back whenever yeah. like all the hot mobile games were about birds. Flappy Bird, Angry Birds. Birds. No. End of list. <laughs> yeah. End of list. Those two. Yeah. But uh, you know. I tried to think of a third one before I said it, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm just gonna go yeah. with it anyway. That's no. all of them. That's all of them. Just the two. It wasn't that Andy big Crowley. a deal. No yeah. Birds. That we know of. <laughs> no birds. Oh, man, dude. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. There's so many old games that's like, if I could go back and play them, I would, but it's like, I just don't have the time. Like, Stardew yeah. Valley, dude. I fucking, bro. I, I've had some good Stardew Valley worlds. Like, I've had some good ones. Oh, man. And then it's like you, you get everything you're done with. I remember w the my most profitable world was me, my buddy Mike, JJ, and my brother. And, I mean, we were playing Stardew Valley every fucking night. We were streaming it. We were staying up to like fucking 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning playing this fucking game. Like every fucking night. We just go and dude. And it was like my buddy Mike, he loves to be the farmer. Give me the seeds. Give me all this. I'll take care of that. I'll bring in the money like that. Me and JJ, we're in the fucking mines all day long. Killing shit. Getting money from all that. Like, oh my god, dude. Like, we had a perfect fucking system down. And then, like, we got, like, the biggest you could achieve. Because the ghost comes back and visits and gives you, like, you know, the fucking star rating or whatever it is. I think it's like three or four. Get the biggest fucking farm achievement, whatever. 
And then it was like after that, we kind of didn't know what to do with ourselves. So it was like Mike's still out there taking care of the crops and then JJ's still in the mines. I was just at the bar playing that little arcade game they have <laughs> and trying to 100% the fucking arcade game. And I couldn't fucking get it, dude, before we stopped playing. Couldn't fucking get it. I wanted to finish it so bad. It was so rough. That was such a hard game. <clears throat> we all had wives. We'd all married different fucking yeah. characters and shit, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah, I go for Haley every time. Haley, the hot blonde. I do not remember the girls. It was the hot blonde, names. dude. The yeah. hot blonde that was all about flowers and shit like that. Like she was the girliest of girls on there for ah. sure. Yeah, yeah, she was my target every time. Target makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a video game, dude. Fuck it, who cares, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no. Man, dude, starting fast. See, even just talking about it makes me want to do it. We should do like a dead funny fucking one. That'd be fun. Like once a fucking month we play it just so that we don't get like too fucking dug into it. Just be like, it's the dead Penny. funny farm. Looking at these pictures, I think I married Penny. Penny? The Was that the sis? Redhead with the yellow outfit on. And this, act, now that I'm looking at her again, she kind of looks like the April O'Neil from the Teenage Mutant. Uh, the turtles. I gotta see Penny. Penny, 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 Penny. Ah, uh, yo, yes. I'm just trying to remember where she's from, though, because I know, <laughs> I know, Leah. You can't, you can't do anything with Leah. Wait, no, there is non-marriageable characters down here. So who am I thinking of? Jody. I'm thinking of Jody. Jo- Robin. Robin. That's the one. That's the one I'm thinking of. Because she is the one that builds the shit for you and she's already got a husband. So, yeah. For me, it's like Haley. If I can't have Haley, it would probably be Leah or Abigail. Yeah. And I think Emily is Haley's sister, which is crazy because they don't look anything alike. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I was in for Haley first, and then yeah, it would be the toss up between Leah or Abigail for the second. I just can't remember. Fucking. Penny. I think I only played the one time. I only existed on one farm. Dude, I wanted Pam, bro. I'm a Stardew monogamous. <clears throat> I always wanted Pam, bro. Fucking the trailer Pam. park chick. Yeah, the fat oh. trailer park chick that would come out all the time and yell at you and shit. Yeah. Trailer park Pam. Oh, huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. She seemed older. Oh and, yeah, you know she character. was like a main supporter of like the Walmart that was moving in, whatever the fuck it was <laughs> called. Yeah, I remember that right. whole fucking yeah, spiel. Okay. In a while. Yeah, dude, fucking starting oh. Valley was the shit. Dude, we used to fucking stream the fuck out of this game all the time. <clears throat> Or George, dude, coming out in the wheelchair. Fucking, he'd give me a ride. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Pam is Penny's. Pa- Pam is my mother-in-law in that game, actually. I hey! Penny's mother, apparently. Ah, okay. dude, you all about that trailer trash, bro? Let's go, yeah, dude. I mean, Let's go, dude. Trailer treasure. <laughs> trailer treasure. <laughs> it's fucking good. <laughs> oh man, I only talk shit because I grew up in trailers for like the majority of my younger life. And trailer parks and shit like that. Oh man, I actually drove past one of those the other day, and I was just sitting there, and I was like, "Never again, dude! Fucking never again!" <laughs> Could no, go yeah, back to I a trailer would, park. Why would you? <laughs> Could go back to a trailer park. Once you've made it to a, a solidly foundational building mm-hmm. or whatever, why would you go back? Yeah. Oh man, dude, that shit was nutty. I used to get into a lot of trouble in the trailer parks, so a lot. But yeah. Non-giftable P- NPCs. I'm trying to see if there's anybody on here that I didn't see. I don't think so. Maybe Professor Snell. He's not ringing a bell. I know Morris was the dude that ran Walmart. Grandpa's ghost. Yeah, I think everybody else I met. I don't know. Leo looks very unfamiliar to me. So I don't know who the fuck Leo is. Maybe he's the Adam later. I don't know. Oh, wow, yeah, he looks like a fucking wizard or something. Leo is a boy who initially lives on Ginger Island. His parents were lost at sea, and he is considered... 
or and he considers the parrots who inhabit the island to be his family. Initially, he is too shy to speak to the player until the player makes friends with the parrots of the island by giving them golden walnuts. I have no idea what the fuck Ginger Island is. This must be completely they new. Added a, it looks like they added it in patch 1.5, so maybe that was after played. Oh, yeah. There's an island trailer, or trader, Mr. Key, Professor oh, wow. Snell, okay, that was and Birdie. Birdie. December 2020. So, yeah. Really? That's new, new. Yeah. Oh, uh, shit. Looks like there's a reason for me to go back to Stardew. Less. That, that explains it. Go, so dude. There's a volcano dungeon now, apparently. And coconuts. Mm. Might have to get my Stardew back on, bro. I guess. What? Who knew? Who fucking knew? Oh, I think it so there's a long list of stuff here that they added, actually. Stardew Valley expanded. Seventeen new hairstyles. Like the pigs, make a pig sound. Who the fuck is Olivia? Lives in the house next to Prairie Store with her son Victor. Their family is wealthy and used to live in Zuzu City, but moved to Stardew Valley to retire. Olivia used to be an accounting manager at Joja. There you go. That's the Walmart Joja. Right. And made a load of money via the stock market. She spends her days dining on exquisite food in fucking Stardew, sipping her mm-hmm. expensive wine once again in fucking Stardew, and walking yes. around Pelican Town, visiting the salon or the saloon, and judging other people. She's good friends with Carolyn, Pierre, and Jody. Yo, but she hot though. Marriageable, yes. She's a new character. What? How old is she? She said to retire. Hold up. What's the age, though? Birthday of spring 15. Doesn't say how old she is. She loves wine, chocolate cake, pink cake, blue moon wine, and aged blue moon wine. Hmm. They have, like, a lot of new NPCs, dude. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. Sophia is another one. Another one that's marriageable. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> about, for to, you. about to be a fucking Mormon on Stardew, bro. Let's go. Let's go. Puppy fish. The fuck? Fish that wants nothing but pets and snacks. It looks like a dog. Okay. Oh, did you see those nasty ass, fucking totally random, nasty ass Sonic and Knuckle Xbox controllers? Oh, yeah, the ones that are fur? Yeah. That's fucking stupid. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it was like a, so dumb. giving away his prizes. It's not. So dumb. Buy them. Like. I mean, when we all play video games, and if you play them for hours, if you're a gamer gamer, your hands sweat. Oh, totally. So you're just going to pull your hand away, and there's going to be knots of fucking blue and red fur just stuck to your fucking hand. That's so dumb, dude. They're not for using, I don't think. Someone's going to use them. They're for having. Someone's going to use them. Trying to see if these are actually just for show or if you can buy them go fast introducing the sonic the hedgehog 2 custom xbox controllers to catch these controllers you better be faster than sonic and more powerful than knuckles through a two enter to win sweepstakes okay yeah yeah so it was just like it's not you can't buy them bro can we talk i don't think we talk about this Idris Alba, voice and knuckles, my guy, dude. Like, what yeah. a fucking top notch guy to voice and knuckles. Let's go, dude. I'm, I'm all for that. It seems super weird that they got you know Ben Schwartz and they got Idris Alba and then Jim Carrey and they just have the the lady who voices Tails in the video games. Oh, is that who voice Tails? Yeah. Nice. It's just the same person. Mm. They didn't think Tails deserved a celebrity. 
the guy that voices Sonic voiced something else that I heard recently. And I was like, that's swear to God, that's the guy that... Oh, did you watch... This show is so bad. Did you watch that Modoc show that came out on Hulu? Yeah. Yeah, his son. Is, oh, yeah, he's in yeah. that. Yeah, ben Schwartz yeah. is in that. Yeah, because like song. as I would hear Sonic him like getting well. hyper, yeah, I would be like, bro, he yeah. sounds just like Sonic. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. Um, there's also something else I was watching too, and I was like, bro, that's the same guy that voices Barrett, but I can't remember what the fuck that he was. He gets either. around uh, on an Apple TV show also, and that's as himself, not as a voice. Yeah. Oh, we said we talk about it. Some new news came up. So the Will Smith incident, right? Oh, sure. So Jada Smith came out and said, fucking, it's a season for healing. Da 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 da. Which was just fucking weird, but whatever. Yep. What a fucking coward. I know I said that last time, but man, to be like, all right, well, I'm still part of like the fucking Oscars or whatever. And then when they're like, well, we're going to go into investigation about the situation that happened. And it's like, okay, I'm resigning from the Oscars. Like, what a fucking coward, dude. I mean, well, Jesus there's nothing Christ. to investigate. He did it. Like, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, like why did they even yeah. say that? Like, while well, we, we're gonna, we're investigating the situation. Bro, you filmed it. What are you talking about? Like, you, right, I mean, you, you filmed it and televised it. Figuring out what to do about it, I guess, because Chris Rock didn't necessarily want to, like, punish him. Yeah, you know? he chose for him to apparently... So there's, there's conversations that are interesting because they said that they, they, everybody was like, oh, well, I can't believe they didn't throw him out. And then apparently, like, there was, like, a tweet or something from the Oscars saying, like, oh, we were just going to let the night be the night. And then apparently there's, like, another tweet where they were like, oh, well, he was asked to be escorted and he wouldn't leave or asked to leave and he wouldn't leave or something yeah, like that. Was like, yeah. And that may have just been a lie. <laughs> like, uh, it's... They didn't actually ask him to leave. Well, then now there's like another tweet out there saying that like Chris Rock specifically said that he he didn't want him to be escorted out, and so that's why they never approached him. I'm like, bro, y'all motherfuckers need to get your story straight. Jesus Christ, <clears throat> it's just like all over the fucking place. But yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, comedians are still going off, and I think it's gonna happen for a while. Um, yeah, it just sucks because it's like. That was such a big moment in TV history. And that's all like Chris Rock is going to probably ever be fucking remembered for. For the longest of time is like he's the yeah, guy that got, got slapped a, publicly on TV. Long by Will career Smith. of notable you know, people like Chris Rock for other stuff. He was a he voiced some dumb animal in Madagascar, I think. Which did you hear that like the wife of that animal is also voiced by Jada? Oh, is that true? I believe so. <laughs> yeah. Hold I think, on. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, now now you say that, it sounds familiar. But uh, I never saw any of those movies. Yeah, she's in Madagascar 3, most, Europe's Most Wanted. Yeah. There's pictures of them together, taking pictures together. Oh. Oh, she's also, she's in all of them, I guess. She's in the second one, too, at least. The first one, yeah. Okay, she's in all of them. Yeah. They know each other, probably. I mean, I'll be surprised they didn't. A lot of those Hollywood actors all know each other. Uh, yeah, because Chris Rock does Marty. And she Oh, does... geez, I hope this incident doesn't endanger Gloria. the future of the Madagascar franchise. Yeah. That's a nutty dude. David Schwimmer, dude. That motherfucker hasn't been doing anything, in my opinion, since fucking Friends, bro. Yeah, he uh, had a thing. There was that OJ show. He had a bit of a resurgence because he was uh, whatever the lawyer is from that. I can't remember the guy. Um, but that was like the last time and the first time in quite a while that anyone paid attention to. Hmm. Yeah, um, so I got this comedian that I like to watch every once in a while, and uh, his name is uh, Mark Normand. I didn't know maybe yeah, you knew that. One at all. He is a uh, 
Comedian from New York, really, really fucking funny guy, and he likes to just randomly tweet shit too. Bro, his shit was going off. Um, he actually just did this set. It's on Netflix. Uh, there's a show on there called The Comedians or something like that, and it's like each episode is like a different like 30 minute set. And yeah. he did one for that, and bro, he had such good fucking jokes. He's talking about like how different kids are these days. He's like, I remember being a kid. And fucking, I didn't care about any of this shit. He's like, now, he's like, it's like we swapped, you know? Like, I remember being a kid, and my dad would come home from working three jobs, had two kids, and had a fucking house, and he was just stressed out all the fucking time. Toward now, he's all like, everybody that was like my dad's age at that point, like, we're all in our 30s and 40s and shit, we're all like, let's go to Comic-Con, and shit like that, you know? While the fucking 14-year-old teenagers are coming home, taking a hit off their vape, and be all like... Trying to impeach the president, change my gender, uh, edit my OnlyFans, and my crypto's going down. Fuck! <laughs> it's just like, bro, have a Skittle and pop a boner. Jesus Christ, you're 14. <laughs> it's just like, it's so fucking funny, dude. Oh my God. But he was talking about um, um, uh, fucking, uh, like, one of, his, one of my favorite jokes from him is he talks about, like, dating women. And he's like, uh... He's like, it's always like a different game. He's like, it, it just doesn't make sense. He's like, you know, like, uh, <laughs> he was talking about the fact that like men are okay with having like the one night stand. Women are not. And he's all like, and it's a situation where it's, uh, he's like, you know, I, I came in, I saw you, I thought you were pretty. He's like, you know, I had to sit there and do all my moves and do all my jokes and get you away from all the other guys that are wanting to hit on you. Got you all the way back to, you know, our place. You know, we had sex. Boom. My job is over. Like this shift change. He's like, you want me to stay? Like now it's your turn. That's shift change. And he's all like, um, and she's like, yeah, well, it just should be customary. And it's like, but it's not. He's like, you know, it's not what was advertised. Like the date was advertised. <laughs> Waking up in the same bed the next morning was not necessarily advertised. And he goes, it's not like I go out to a movie and be like, you know what? I really need to stick around after this movie and get to know this movie theater. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, no fucking way, dude. And then uh, <laughs> he talks about the fact that like women put on all this makeup and stuff. He's like, and it's, he's like, it's all so fake. He's like, you know, we never get to see like the real you. He's like, so, you know, sex is like a great first thing because then, you know, like the hair gets all messy, the makeup comes off, you're in sweat, whatever. He's like, and like, you know, it's the real you. He's like, and, you know, like guys will point that shit out. They'll call out their buddies, but like, hey, man, how's it going? Oh, last night I slept with Gloria. He's like, how was it? He's like, huh, finally met her. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, it's so funny, dude. Uh, he cracks me the fuck up with that shit. But yeah, he's got a good couple of little uh, things out there. I saw him. Um, because the comedians I watch, he had showed up on a Something's Burning with Bert, where he has his like own cooking show, and it's just always about like just funny shit, and like they're just all comedians talking and stuff. But yeah, so he said we should change Karen to Jada. <laughs> that was one of them. Another one he had was uh, uh, thank God Chris Rock didn't take a shot at Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ukraine is now sending help to the Oscars. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, dude. He was just going off, dude. It was so fucking funny. Uh, it, it literally was all like, I was hoping I'd be able to go to the Oscars. I typed Hollywood into the GPS and it said, you'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of fucking good jokes, dude. He's funny as fuck. Uh, he's just a really like his sense of humor is funny as shit, but he's just like the way he says stuff. And every time he signs off of his like sets, he always goes, "Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm Kevin Hart. Have a great time." Like he literally says Kevin Hart every time. He's just like comedy. Like, yeah, it's just so fucking funny, dude. Oh, but it was weird because apparently it's like like their first time doing this like since the pandemic, and like it's very obvious to see like since the pandemic, there's definitely been like a tone change. Especially like cancel culture and shit. Like a lot more people are like on edge and stressed out, and everybody's getting offensive about or getting offensive about something. And uh, it was like so many times during so many of their sets where they're like, "By the way, this is just going to be jokes, just jokes, guys, just jokes." Like it sucks when comedians have to do that. It really ruins like the I, fucking. But they don't atmosphere. have to do that. They, they would be don't. Fine. They're just making themselves out to be victims. I mean, uh, some of them are. Some of them they are. I agree. Louis a Grammy. That's week. true. He's it's a guy true. who did a thing and actually, like, not even words. Like, he had an actual thing he did, and they gave him a grand. I just masturbated in front of people. The thing he did, like, you know, oh gosh, the thing that he's 
in theory canceled for he got a grammy for talking about it like yeah it's it's this it feels overblown well it's no, even like we pointed out last time very long yeah i mean that's true unless um, no one who had any merit <sighs> is gone for very long like the world can maybe move on without chris delia or whatever that they have trouble coming back but even him now like even a c-tier kind of guy as people are like will pay to see him when he comes back now yeah i don't know i don't know man it's definitely interesting that's for sure i mean l gibson gets a lot of work still like people yeah and he he yeah, he's fucking shit. crazy <laughs> yeah He's went um, off the fucking rails before. That's for yeah. fucking sure. That is for fucking sure. I don't know, man. And I think fully assaulted Madonna, and we still let him do stuff. Like it's it's wild. I don't know. Like if if you've a built in, if you have an audience already, like if you're a total rando, then maybe like you gotta watch out. But I mean, because I can kind of understand it solely due to the fact of like not necessarily watching those jokes. You know, like obviously, you know, like. You got to judge what you're going to do, read the room, da 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 da, whatever. But, you know, like some spicier content, whether it's like some more racial stuff or it's fucking transgender stuff or whatever. But, like, I feel like it, it is one of those situations. Like, Chris D'Elia obviously is not that big a deal to me. I can drop his fucking content. That was easy. But it's like, I couldn't imagine, like, that being something like Kevin Hart. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I've seen every fucking stand-up special. I've watched so much. Or like Joe Rogan, for instance. Like, if fucking Joe Rogan had done that with, like, a kid or something like that. That It's like, I... Or Andrew Schultz is a better fucking example. I ingest his content daily. Like, yeah. daily. To remove that from your routine has got to be hard. Yeah, no, I mean, I've... Yeah, it's, there are people who are like... Um... I don't know that he did a crime necessarily, but like Thomas Middleditch from Silicon Valley has had. Yeah, what did he do? He he went to like he was maybe like groping women in a place that was like sort of a sex club, but like there's still a consent aspect that he was maybe not getting before he was doing whatever he was doing. But it wasn't enough to like totally at least not. It didn't hit all at once. It seems like he's being phased out of whatever CBS show he's on now. Like, it's been a slow scent for him, I guess. But, but it was a bummer because he's very funny. And yeah, know, I, I enjoyed quite a bit of his work. Yeah, it was being accused of sexual misconduct stemming from an incident at a now defunct Los Angeles nightclub. Allegations against him were detailed in a Los Angeles Times report published Sunday where a woman named Hannah Harding revealed that she and her female friend were groped by the actor at a Hollywood nightclub, Cloak and Dagger, in October 2019, according to the report. Hardigan and Middleditch, or Hardigan said Middle Ditch, made lewd sexual overtures towards her and her girlfriend and kept pursuing. It seems like he's a guy who like fame really went to his head because also he had a whole thing with his wife where he basically talked her into opening up their marriage in a way that she did not want and they had not agreed upon before getting married or anything and it's like it's got creepy <laughs> i guess i mean people change right i mean obviously marriage yeah. is supposed to be a thing for life and if you have that conversation and everybody's on board then yes i agree like that that's not a creepy thing to me even if it didn't start out that way that's not a creepy thing to me some people change i would never do that but you know some people change right. I, mean, what it is. I mean this, if you look up the story or whatever it's i feel like the context of it whatever whatever she said about it made it sound like etchy i guess but uh Whatever. Point is, it's he, he's uh, it's a bummer that he's like, shitty. It's all it's a so many people turn out to suddenly be shitty. And it's it sucks. Yeah, because I liked him a lot, even in that college, because he came from college humor. Wow. Yeah. Did you ever see that one skit he had where he was acting as the Shamwell guy in prison? 
<laughs> no, Dude, I don't think so. That skit's fucking hilarious. It's like fucking three minutes long, and it's him as the Shamwell guy. If the Shamwell guy got locked up, so they're just like a whole bunch of guys out on the yard playing basketball, lifting weights, and all of a sudden it just shows him, and it's like, all right, step right on up. Let's go ahead and talk about currency. And he pulls out a carton of cigarettes, and he just starts going. <laughs> And then he starts talking about, like, fucking, like, fake knives. He's like, yeah, it's a fake knife. You know, if you want to sit there and hold it out there, he goes, but the problem is, if you stab somebody, it doesn't happen. So like, that's when you need your real knife. And he pulls out an actual knife. And this is this dude that's sitting next to him. He's like, stab, 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 stab. He's dead. Move on. And, like, the dude just dies and just fucking just start bleeding out and shit. Larry should cancel. Man, Vince Offer, the ShamWow guy, actually has disappeared off the face of the earth. That's because he, like, bit a prostitute one time. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Oh my like, god. That like guy, they don't, they don't let come back. That's that's the level of fame. That's the um, the ratio of fame to weird crime you actually have to for eternity. Apparently, he beat up a hooker. That oh, I thought he, oh maybe her up because she bit him because he started to try to kiss her and she was like no we didn't agree to that and then there was a thing there it was something someone got bit i think the pitch man for the super absorbent sham lao has been arrested dude he looks terrible whenever he's not like <laughs> the sham well guy has been arrested for not having a good clean or not having good clean fun unless you consider hiring a hooker who almost bites your tongue off fun. Uh, okay, so she yeah, there you go. Hooker when she allegedly he began kissing the hooker, she allegedly bit his tongue and then would not let go. According to the cops, Shalomi then punched the prostitute several times until she released his tongue. Both the prostitute and Shalomi were arrested for felony aggravated battery. Excuse us for living, but it seems justified to punch a hooker who bites your tongue. I mean, if she bit it and legit wouldn't like, like, what do you do? You know, like, well, yeah, what do you even do? A few he, I think, was already doing a thing he shouldn't be doing. And then she I'm sure. was reacting to that. And then he reacted to that, and he maybe overreact. Well, you gotta get your tongue free, obviously. But it sounds like he really broke parts of her face or something. I mean, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, at the same like, time, it's like if you're gonna like not let go. I don't know if you're about to try to bite my tongue off. Your fucking teeth yeah. are strong enough to do it. Like, I mean, it'd be the same thing if we're talking about like you know like a blowjob or something. Like, I could not imagine just be like. Well, I hope you let go. Like, no. Like, you gotta, there's gotta be some yeah, self defense uh, yeah, there. You know what I mean? It was a bad situation where he was already doing a crime and then suddenly did a crime within a crime. His prostitution already, you know, he's already not supposed to be doing the thing where he hires a prostitute. Not? Also have a unless it was in Nevada. Nevada, it's legal. Yeah. Just, so. Uh, nested crimes <laughs> in a way that was not good for him, I imagine. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. I forgot all about that. Because I think I remember the story the same way you did, where it was like he had bit a hooker. Okay, so he... So they dropped... They didn't actually prosecute either of them, as it turns out. Yeah, because they, they both got arrested. Yeah, they both yeah, went they both to jail arrested, for the same thing. They just, go, yeah. Because it was like, ah, this is a draw. <laughs> yeah. You know what? <laughs> you were biting his tongue, holding him hostage. Yeah. It was self-defense, but he took it a little bit too far. Like, yeah, you know? Like, they're both physical yeah. in that situation. Hashtag equality. Like, you know what I mean? Like, fuck it. They both went to the slammer. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, that dude full on disappeared forever. Oh, that's fucking nutty, dude. That's crazy. I forgot all about that fucking guy. But yeah, that skit's hilarious. You should go fucking check it out. For it's fucking reason, funny as fuck. To this day, I remember his fucking name. Why? I don't know, man. It's the same thing with, like, Billy Mays, dude. Well, sure, Billy Mays for Oxy, please. As far as yep. I know, he was all right. Yeah, I mean. You know? Or at least he he died before he could find out. He was that's what man. I was about to say. He did what they talk about. It's either live long enough to become a villain or die a hero. Yes. Yeah. It was a very Batman-esque thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> dude. Exactly. Did that actually come from Batman? Like I know it's a, I know it's a line from the Dark Knight, but I wonder if like that originated somewhere oh, else. And no, Dark Knight I think just it's used an original it. line from the Dark Knight. That's yeah. a good fucking line. Like that's an original for the Dark Knight. That's newer. 
Like, that's not, like, old as fuck. You know, that's, like, 2000s, early 2000s. Like, that's... You know, it's something that only makes sense. I mean, you know, you can expand it to other things, but, like, it really made a lot of sense within the context of a superhero thing. It does, but that's what I'm saying, though. Like, yeah. that's pretty impressive if that was, like, created for that movie exactly. It was, yeah. It looks like I, I can't find anything that indicates anything else. Yeah. So I could see it like in a comic and then being put into the movie. But if it was just straight, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's just, it's for wow. Nolan's pretty good at writing the thing. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, that's fucking impressive. Okay. Well, you know, you don't be like the ShamWow guy. You know, there you go. And that's where we're going to end yeah. this podcast on the ShamWow guy. So <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on those notifications. That way you get notified next time we upload a video. It's in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and views. And yeah, other than that, we will see you next week.